and moving forward in this year, I sense from the Holy Spirit that whilst there are so many voices that are out there trying to help us cope with this pandemic and MCO, or the voices of doom and gloom that put so much fear into us, the voice that we must listen to most clearly is the voice of our Master Shepherd, Jesus Christ. He has sent the Holy Spirit to help and remind us what we need to know and do. We must remember that God never promises that there will be no problems in our lives, but in them, we will have peace. The COVID-19 pandemic is affecting all parts of society. For some, the impact may be just minimal disruptions. But for others, the change is significant and life-altering. We acknowledge the anxieties, the fears, the uncertainties and helplessness. No one is spared. Many of us have not been able to meet often, and that has not been healthy for our own emotional well-being. <laughs> this recent Christmas is an unusually quiet Christmas. And I hope we are all still waking up each morning and greet Good Morning Holy Spirit. I pray it is not only as a matter of habit, but as a posture of our heart and spirit, that while the days ahead of us may be filled with many voices, we need to be guided by the voice of the Holy Spirit in all that we do, if we want to be relevant and fruitful in our lives. You see, fruitfulness is not about the absence of problems. Neither is it about the presence of good things. Fruitfulness is about what God desires and through us cultivating and growing the fruits of the kingdom wherever we are, whatever circumstances we are in. And scriptures relate the stories of hardships and sufferings of God's people. And through them, they found peace, hope, and purpose. And scriptures are full of the promises of God that brings us blessings, whether it's material or otherwise, and sometimes not the way we hope. Well, the focus, by the way, is not on us, but on our loving, heavenly Father. The words Moses spoke to Joshua in the Old Testament is repeated in the New Testament. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 to 6, it says that, God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? You see, I don't have to be afraid because God is with me. Church, this is a unique time in history to grow in a faith and encounter with God who is in complete control. I've seen some church members who have not only learned new skills in this pandemic, but have become so much more useful for the kingdom of God. <laughs> the pandemic did not keep them down, but it helped them to step up, step out, step in, and to step forward. So my heart is full of thanks for the opportunity God has given us in DUMC. We never stop loving God and serving people. We just keep going. As we enter the new year, we are still in the midst of a storm. And likely it will not go away for another year at the very least. But for one thing, for certain is this. While there are many things changing around us, the scripture proclaimed with certainty in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let me repeat that. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And here's my big idea. Christ is more than enough. Christ is more than enough. So, are there similar storms in the Bible that cause the people to be disoriented, discouraged, confused, and maybe even fearful? One such story comes to my mind, and it is a story of Jesus calming the storm. It is such a powerful story we can relate to. So why don't we, we stand and, and read the Word of God together in whatever languages that you have. Let's stand and read from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. Are you ready? Let's read it together. That day when evening came, He said to His disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, 
be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. And he said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Please be seated. It is a familiar story that we have read many times in the gospel. And it is a powerful story about how Jesus calmed a violent storm. But it is not in the miracle that we are focusing on. We are going to focus on the fact that Jesus is in the midst of this storm. Hence, I titled this sermon as Jesus is in our storms. And so the passage starts off with this phrase, that day. That day. What kind of day was it? What was he doing earlier that day? Well, if we go to verse 1 of Mark chapter 4, he started the day by the lake teaching the people. It says in verse 1 that the crowd was so large that he needed to get into the boat and teach from there. And here's a photo of what it may look like. And for the disciples, it was just another normal day with Jesus where he would teach the crowd and then later maybe debrief the disciples perhaps over a meal. A seemingly normal day. Well, we all have started 1st January 2020 like any other day, any other year, with little warning of what's to come. The signs were there in Wuhan in December 2019 when the virus was first detected. And we thought it would be an isolated incident confined to China maybe. Little did we know. So that day, a normal day indeed. When evening came, it was evening. I'm reminded that it's easier to trust God in the daytime when we can see everything. But when evening comes, when the sun is setting, and the things are not that clear, it is something else. Maybe some of you are going into an evening time right now when you cannot see things clearly. It may not necessarily be related to this pandemic, but a sudden or ongoing crisis in your life. You may be going into a storm like these disciples. So I believe God has a word for you today. And then the next line said, Jesus said, let us go over to the other side. <laughs> Interestingly, Jesus took the initiative. It is rather strange that Jesus will want to sail across to the other side of this uh, lake in this late hour, because it would take about two hours to do that. But we don't know exactly the intentions of Jesus. Is it for a rest over there for the night? or for something new he would like them to do the next day maybe. But the point is, Jesus took the initiative, and he knew what was ahead. And verse 36 says, Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. Now, some of these disciples are very experienced fishermen, so they took charge. And I must say, if I'm in a boat with experienced and seasoned fishermen, I would certainly be very confident when they navigate the water. Moreover, these fishermen were familiar with the lake as they had lived there their whole lives. So just as he was sitting in a the boat, they sail off. Meaning, you know what? Jesus did not get out of the boat since sitting there the whole day. It must be a very tiring day. You know, I, I had preached and taught the entire day before uh, many times. But these were all in air-conditioned halls. And when I hit the pillow that night, trust me, I was really tired mentally and physically just from teaching. I can't imagine Jesus doing this sitting in the boat the whole day and then again the next day and the next day. The next line says, there were also other boats with him. Other boats tag along. There will always be people in the same boats like ours watching us in this pandemic. What we do and what we say impact them. And verse 37 says, a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Now, huge and fierce sudden storms were common at this lake, which was surrounded by high hills and narrow valleys that functioned as wind tunnels. The Sea of Galilee is actually a big lake, 20 kilometers long and 13 kilometers wide. And here's a map to show you what they actually did. Remember, these were experienced fishermen, and they could not predict the storm either. The storm came out of nowhere. 
If this fisherman had thought for one moment that they would be caught in this storm, they would not have gone out. So, surely Jesus, being the Son of God, knew a storm was brewing. So here's the question. Will Jesus send us into a storm? Jesus is supposed to love and protect us. Surely, He will not send us into a storm, right? Well, this is the point that many people don't understand. How can a God of love allow disasters and crises to happen in our life? That's such a common question. You see, we are already living in a sinful world due to our rebellion to God. The Bible says this earth is groaning, waiting for the recreation of the new earth when Jesus comes again. In other words, all that evil and bad are part and parcel of who we are as sinners living in this sinful and fallen world. Jesus did not come to take us out of this world, at least for now, but that in this world, we will, we will find peace. Well, we will eventually find peace when we depart from this place and go to our true home. But while you are in it, God says He will help you through in this journey. And one of these things God would do is to allow certain crises and challenges to come so that we can grow through them. And this is sometimes quite hard to understand, that we grow through all these crises and challenges. Now let me point to you a passage of Scripture from Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 4. It says that, Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And in some sense, God is allowing these things to grow us, to be more like Him, in growing character, in growing hope. So, the question, would Jesus therefore send us into the storm? My simple answer is yes, Jesus can and He does. Or maybe some of us may even say, well, He should have warned us at the very least so that we can be more prepared. <laughs> but I think the question is, how often do we actually take God's warning seriously anyway? So we may be deaf to His warning too. Now, in this case, there was no warning. There's no time to prepare. And that's when it becomes scary. Then comes the intriguing part, intriguing part of the story. And verse 38 says this, listen to this. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The stern means the back of the boat. So the question really uh, interesting is, how can Jesus sleep in the middle of the storm? There are two possible reasons. The first obvious reason, as I mentioned earlier, was that he could have been so tired out. And this showed the human side of Jesus. You see, though he's divine, he got tired too as a man. Ministry, by the way, is very hard work. When we care for and are concerned for others, it exhausts us. And that's why I think Jesus understands what we go through for those of us who are involved in ministry. The second reason, the first being that he's really tired, the second reason was that he was absolutely secure in his sleep because he knew his father's will. His father's will was for him to die at Calvary, not to get lost or die at sea. Not yet. Jesus had found peace in God, even in the midst of a storm, because he had confidence in his father and he wants to teach us to be like him as well. The next line says, The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Don't you care? Now, aren't we like that often when we ourselves go through a hard time? God, Jesus, don't you care? Maybe you are in such a situation right now asking God, Don't you care, God? Don't you know what I'm going through? Why don't you answer me? Now, I want you to notice something. They call Jesus teacher and not Lord. Why? You see, Likely at that time, they did not know him enough and saw him only as a teacher. But after that storm, they knew he was more. Because from verse 41, it says that they saw the power he had over nature. 
their relationship with him was further reflected in their question, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? See, these are the few times the disciples doubted Jesus' intent and ability. <laughs> they were sometimes very cynical because they don't really know him. You know, we are like that too. Let's not, not laugh at the disciples. We are actually like that. What they didn't know was that he cared so much for them that he was going to die for them on their behalf on the cross to save them from eternal hell. They thought they were going to die at sea, but instead, God's plan was to give them an experience of their lifetime. And verse 39, He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. And then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. Now, why did Jesus silence the storm? Often the noises of our circumstances distract and stress us, and maybe even magnify a situation more than what it is. Sometimes we need to ask Jesus to silence certain noises in our life that, that do not help. And then verse 14, he says this, He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? See, what he's saying to us is this, Keep your eyes on me and not the storm. Faith is not just about a system or knowledge of beliefs, but the faith in the person called Jesus. And that is why the disciples were right in not asking what happened, rather, who caused this to happen. We read this in verse 41. They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. <laughs> The disciples were beginning to understand that Jesus is more than a teacher. He is the Lord of their lives and the King of the entire universe. What about you? Is Jesus your teacher or is he Lord? Now, I know some of you treat Jesus, Jesus like a teacher because you go from one seminar to another seminar. One church to another church sometimes to listen to good sermon because you only think that the Christian faith evolves around good sermon. But really, the Christian faith is about obedience of what he's saying to us. And therefore, our faith will be tested for its authenticity all right, in difficult times. Are you going through a storm right now? Are you seeing the opportunity for growth in this storm? And are you keeping your eye on Jesus rather than the storm? So, allow him to be the captain of your boat. With that, let me end with this spiritual emphasis as we start this year in this pandemic storm. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. I love this verse. It says that, And let us run with perseverance the race marked for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer, and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning his shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you would not grow weary and lose heart. The big idea again, Christ is more than enough. Christ is more than enough. Our emphasis is on Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. When the disciples faced a storm in the boat, their focus was on themselves and their fear. They cried out, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Well, we need to come to this point like the disciples who finally asked, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. You see, unless, listen to this carefully, unless and until we come to know Christ as Lord, and not just a teacher, we will not be able to write out any storm. It may be the pandemic today and something else tomorrow. Troubles in this sinful world are plenty ahead of us. So our focus, therefore, our focus, therefore, must be on Christ. This pandemic has, in some sense, moved us into much introspection 
about our spiritual state. We must learn to do things His way and be willing to forsake our plans and ambitions. I sense a call to be growing deeper, to be wider and higher. And it is the Jesus way for growth and sustainability. And I will touch on that next weekend for the English Church in the sermon titled, Building Strong Foundations. Now this week, I want all of us to be reminded that Christ is more than enough. And that Christ is in our storms. And I want to leave you with a testimony of how God see a family through a very tough time during this pandemic. This is the story of my daughter-in-law, Michelle, and her mom, Nyo Hong. Her father, Mr. Yu Heng Leong, the late Mr. Yu Heng Leong, was suffering from stomach cancer since the beginning of 2020. It was undergoing medical treatment and operations as well. But unfortunately, the Lord took him home early November, two months ago. And Michelle is currently based in Perth. And due to the pandemic, she was unable to re return home to be with her mom. She's the eldest with two younger siblings. And hence, you can imagine the sadness and disappointment that she's unable to be with the family. Well, we, Stella and I, journeyed with her and realized how much Jesus was in this storm for them. I thought of her while preparing this sermon and asked if she could recount her journey with her mom. And I will read their testimonies something they have written. And this is a photo of both Mr. and Mrs. Yu. They both worship uh, in Wesley Methodist Church in Stiawan. And this is what Mrs. Yu wrote, and let me read it for you. And Mrs. Yu wrote, This chapter of pain and loss has opened the door for me to experience God's grace and peace like none other. In that 11 months journey, I saw how God has really touched my late husband's heart. Before every procedure, be it major or minor, he would tell me he has no fear and that he felt the presence of the Lord each time. My cell leader has encouraged me to attend weekly prayer meet from years ago, but not until early 2019 that I make a commitment and started attending. Looking back, God indeed has prepared me since. Today, I'm amazed myself in how God has strengthened and brought me through this journey far better beyond my own expectation and even more so after my husband's return to the Lord. Leading up to his home going, he felt so loved by many who would either call or text him each day to ask how he is. He would relate this to me with tears of gratitude. Though my heart, for sure, and the feeling, sorry, though my heart is wounded for sure and the feeling of missing him will always be there. Tears will flow on and off. But I take comfort in the joy of the Lord in this storm, and I look forward to the day of reunion at the throne of God. And this is what Michelle, her daughter, wrote. The last time I physically saw that, he was as healthy as he could be. I went through that journey or that period of his cancer and ultimately losing him, all from a distance in Perth. In that state of pure hopelessness and helplessness, I almost have no choice but to recognize that the only place to hang on to is God. In the midst of my pain, never have I expected to experience God's most amazing grace. Seeing how Dad kept his faith and went through it with so much peace and later, seeing how well my mom has coped with the loss is extraordinary. The ability to experience this joy that comes with the storm while not physically present with my dad, which makes it even more unreal, is the living evidence that God indeed is near the broken hearted. Psalm 34, verse 18. Through the pain, questions, and even anger, I've learned to be stubborn, stubborn to follow and keep my eyes focused on the only one that matters, Jesus. So Christ is enough. What a powerful testimony. Friends, you may be in a storm right now, or you may be fearful about the potential storms ahead. Know that Christ is enough. Will you invite Jesus into your situations and let Him calm that storm? Will you lift your hands to the Lord, surrender your life to Him and trust that 
He will take you through. And some of you are concerned about your business, your finances, your health, your family. And will you leave your concerns to Him?